The Minnesota Twins completed a highly successful road trip out west, taking two of three against both Arizona and Seattle this past week, behind a lineup that is firmly establishing itself as one of the best and deepest in the major leagues. What's up, Twins fans, and welcome to the Twins Daily Week in Review podcast. We are bringing you everything you need to know about the past seven days of Twins baseball in about 20 minutes every Sunday evening. My name is Nick Nelson. I am the narrator of this here show and uh, also the author of the Twins Daily Week in Review column on the site, twinsdaily.com, which we invite you to come check out and share your thoughts. Uh, a fun week of baseball for the Twins, uh, an exciting week with some, some winning. So let's jump right to it with the weekly snapshot for Monday, June 24th through Sunday, June 30th. Uh, twins going four and two over the past week to improve their overall record to 47 and 37 on the season. Now 10 games over 500 here as we are just past the halfway mark of the season. Uh, Their run differential over the past seven days, plus 16. Uh, The Twins have outscored their opponents by 39 runs total on the season. Uh, They are now second place still in the American League Central. Uh, Six games behind the Cleveland Guardians, they were able to shave a game and a half off that deficit over the past week, but uh, Cleveland continuing to play pretty good ball overall. Uh, Let's dive into the game results quickly, uh, one by one. On Tuesday, uh, Twins opened up a series at Chase Field against the Diamondbacks, lost 5-4 to in that one. Uh, Pretty good game, some tough breaks late, leading to the one-run loss. Uh, Twins came back the next day on Wednesday to win convincingly 8-3 to with Jose Miranda leading the offensive charge in that lopsided win. Uh, And then an even more lopsided win in the series finale on Thursday, Twins winning 13-6, to uh, David Festa making his Major League debut on the mound in that game. Uh, Twins headed from Arizona to Seattle to complete this road trip, uh, lost 3-2 in the series opener, uh, some defensive miscues proving costly and another tight loss for the Twins. Uh, But once again, resiliently bounced back to win the next two games. This is three straight series out West where the twins lost the opening game and then came back to win the series. They win five to one on Saturday, Byron Buxton with the big offensive performance, uh, Pablo Lopez pitching very well. And in the series finale on Sunday, a five to three win with a big late Homer from Trevor Larnick proving to be the difference for the twins in that one. We'll get to the highlights, the lowlights and the trending storyline shortly, but quick uh, first we'll quickly touch on the news and notes for the past week. Not a lot to cover here. uh, Although we did wonder In last week's show, if the Twins might choose to give Chris Paddock a break following his second straight alarming performance on the mound. Uh, Indeed, they did. Uh, They placed Chris Paddock on the injured list early last week with what they are describing as arm fatigue. Uh, It is unclear exactly how long Paddock might be sidelined. I would not be surprised if it's through the all-star break, which would give him a nice almost a month off to to build up his arm strength and get himself ready. Because uh, what matters most right now is ensuring that, that Paddock can be as strong and healthy as possible at the end of the season and into the playoffs. Uh, and, you know, they have they have some solid options uh, to fill in in the meantime. Uh, as Minnesota's top pitching prospect now is getting an audition in Paddock's stead. Uh, following an interim bullpen stint from Ronnie Enriquez, who stepped in for a few days to fill that open roster vacancy, uh, David Festa called up to start Thursday's series finale against Arizona. Uh, a lot of great buzz around Festa and what he's been able to do in the minors, racking up strikeouts with stuff that has just uh, dramatically improved since he was, I believe, a 13th round draft pick a few years ago. So shaping up as a big success story for the Derek Falvey pitching pipeline. Uh, In his debut on Thursday, Festa showed some positive signs, I would say, um, and he was awarded with the win in his debut, despite giving up five earned runs in five innings, Um, only two strikeouts. But, you know, what really impressed me was that he was uh, he was really hammering the strike zone, which I think was a big question mark for Festa. Um, Pretty high walk rate in the minors. I think that's the biggest hurdle that he has to clear. So I um, think he threw almost 70% strikes in that game, which is really good to see, uh, even though he gave up some runs, uh, fortunately got a lot of run support. So uh, David Festa should get at least a couple more chances to show what he can do here uh, before the twins, you know, make a decision on Paddock. Jumping into the highlights for the past week, a four and two week for the twins. Uh, if Byron Buxton is truly rounding back into his top form or something close to it, the league is in trouble. 
Uh, Buxton was the key difference maker in Saturday night's win against Seattle. Drove in four of the team's five runs in that 5-1 to one victory. Uh, three of those runs coming in on a monster home run uh, from Buxton, which was which pretty vintage. I mean, he just crushed it and uh, a great follow-through. Um, you know, he's locked in right now. That was Buxton's fourth homer in five games. Uh, days earlier in the same week, he made some key plays on the bases uh, to keep rallies rolling in a win over the Diamondbacks. So doing things with his swing, with his legs, uh, and still looking pretty good in the field. Uh, for the week, Buxton was 8 for 19 with three homers and nine RBIs in five games. Uh, Buxton started the month of June on an 0 for 14 skid. Since then, he has multiple hits in six of 17 games started and is batting 343 with 10 extra base hits in 19 games total. Uh, his strikeout rate during that span is below 20%, which is a really encouraging sign to me. And it makes that success feel more sustainable than maybe your typical fleeting hot streak. Uh, we know Buxton can be a streaky hitter, but when he's making contact at this rate, uh, he's going to be productive. There's just not two ways about it. Uh, and he struck out only twice in his 22 plate appearances over the past week. Uh, from all appearances, Buxton is feeling as good as he has in a long time. He's moving around well, uh, no longer routinely wincing visibly, you know, after exerting himself. Um, I thought it was really encouraging to see Buxton spring up uh, quickly after what was a somewhat scary wall collision in Arizona on Tuesday, seemingly no worse for the wear. Uh, the Twins are not only more enjoyable to watch when Buxton is doing his thing like this, but they can also be an extremely tough team to stop, as we've seen. Uh, Buxton's emergence is bringing the twin star nucleus into full activation, which is awesome to see. Carlos Correa keeps on just raking and taking great at bats. He went seven for 17 this past week with three walks and only one strikeout. Um, a scary moment on Thursday, Correa was hit by a pitch in the wrist, uh, reacted in a, in a concerning fashion. He immediately pulled himself from the game, shaking his head, uh, looked like he was fearing a major injury. But uh, we learned after the game that x-rays thankfully came back negative. Uh, which is yet another, you know, example of something I've talked about, which is that this team has just had a refreshingly <laughs> improved run of fortune on the health front compared to last year's. Uh, seems like these decisions, you know, these these things would never go their way in the past. Um, Correa was not only in the lineup the next day, uh, but he hit a home run, uh, which was his fifth in the month of June. His 311 average on the season ranks fourth in the American League as I speak. Um, Royce Lewis naturally fell into a one for 25 slump uh, shortly after bragging that he doesn't do the whole slumping thing, but uh, his OPS is still over a thousand for the season. And uh, you know, Royce Lewis clearly a threat every time he steps into the box, complimenting Buxton and Correa alongside those three uh, Minnesota continues to receive strong contributions from the likes of Willie Castro, who was eight for 25 with a double, a triple and a home run last week. Carlos Santana also went eight for 25, hit three doubles. And Jose Miranda, who was eight for 18, hit two doubles, six RBIs, and zero strikeouts. Uh, this has been arguably the best offense in baseball for a prolonged period now. And credit is absolutely deserved for all involved, from the players to the coaches to the manager, and of course the front office that uh, pulled this team together. Uh, since April 22nd, when the Twins put that ugly 7-13 and start behind them and started their winning streak, they are tied with the Yankees for the most runs scored in the major leagues. Uh, Minnesota is at or near the top of the leaderboard in virtually every offensive metric during that span. With an approach at the plate that is roundly yielding both contact and power, the Twins lead the American League in batting average during the 64-game span we're talking about here dating back to April 22nd, and they have the fifth lowest strikeout rate in the majors. Uh, so, you know, making a lot of contact, getting a lot of hits, but also showing a lot of power. On Sunday, the Twins had a player hit a home run for a franchise record 19th consecutive game. So this offense really getting it done on all fronts. As long as they can stay mostly healthy, there's not much reason to think the Twins can't keep running up the score in the second half. This lineup is deep and formidable, and they're only reaching new levels with Buxton finding himself at the plate and Trevor Larnick's great swings finally starting to bear fruit. I mentioned a huge home run on Sunday uh, that proved to be the difference in lifting the Twins. Uh, on top of that, they've also got Brooks Lee and Matt Walner knocking on the door rather aggressively in AAA. Um, so truly, you know, an embarrassment of riches. I look at this lineup and you've got Jose Miranda batting eighth. Um, you know, you've got you've got just deep, deep lineups and no real breaks for opposing pitchers. So 
I would say that the offensive outlook for this club is blindingly bright as we look ahead to the second half. Uh, in the rotation, Pablo Lopez followed up his previous gem against Oakland last Sunday with another sterling performance on Saturday, holding Seattle to one run in six inning with nine strikeouts. Uh, his ERA back down below five. Uh, you know, it was it was up there. Uh, he was having a tough time, but uh, two great starts in a row from Pablo Lopez. Obviously very promising. Uh, Bailey Ober, also two great starts in a row we've seen from him. He posted the very same line one night earlier on Friday. Six innings, one earned run, and nine strikeouts. Um, Ober right now looking as locked in as he has all year. Uh, Joe Ryan on Sunday struck out 10 with no walks allowed. His strikeout to walk ratio on the season, a sensational 115 to 15. Uh, Twin starters leading the league in strikeout rate, the American League, uh, at 24%. In the bullpen, Jorge Alcala is establishing himself as a huge bright spot. Uh, He gave up a tough luck run and took the loss on Tuesday in Arizona, but Alcala was able to bounce back with scoreless innings on Friday and Saturday, striking out four in those two appearances. Uh, In 12 outings in the month of June, Alcala has allowed only two earned runs in 13 and two-third innings. That is good for a 1.32 ERA. Uh, And to this point, Alcala still has not allowed a home run all year. Now that the Twins have fully committed to him in this one-inning role where he's able to really let loose and not uh, be pushed to throw multiple innings or 50 pitches, uh, he's really blossoming, Um, you know, further dialing up his already impressive velocity. On Saturday night, uh, Alcala registered a career-high 101.2 miles per hour on the gun. Uh, Turning our attention to the lowlights, you know, a couple losses um, in close games. You can't afford to miss on the little things, and that was the story yet again for the Twins, who lost their fifth and sixth consecutive one-run games in the series openers against Arizona and Seattle. Um, You play tight games, it's a dangerous dance. We talked about this last week as well when they had the three-game losing streak, all one-run losses. Uh, A rare hiccup from Griffin Jacks. Uh, on Friday, he walked the leadoff man and then watched him come around to score on, a, on an error. Um, you know, that loomed large. That loomed larger than it, than it needs to. Um, Cole Sands took the loss in that game in the 10th inning um, without allowing a ground ball to leave the infield. So, um, again, just tough luck. Uh, that's baseball. Um, earlier in that game, the first run had scored when Christian Vasquez failed to corral an in-time throw at home plate and apply the tag worsening matters for himself on a night where he went over four at the plate. Uh, Vasquez was one for 11 over the course of the week and his OPS is down to a miserable 459 on the season. Uh, obviously frustrating to see these lackluster showings. Um, and overall Vasquez has clearly been a big disappointment. Uh, but I do think that the calls for releasing him, which were, uh, quite loud on Twitter on Saturday night or uh, Friday night, uh, maybe a little bit much. Um, for one thing, it's not happening. Uh, you know, Vasquez is still owed about $15 million through next year. Um, but also, he hasn't been as detrimental to the team as some would suggest, I think. Uh, he's been good defensively, you know, Friday's misplay notwithstanding. And while Christian Vasquez has been well below the offensive standard for even a part time glove first catcher, that is a role with very low offensive expectations. Uh, Even with Vasquez starting every other game as he has, you can live with him buried at the bottom of this ultra deep lineup. And we've seen that. I mean, Vasquez is playing every other day and yet that hasn't stopped the twins from developing into arguably the league's most potent offense. Um, I hope, that in the second half here, you can show he's got at least a little something left in the tank. It's hard to be worse than he has been. Uh, but if he doesn't improve dr- tremendously, I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. Um, the Twins have shown they have no problem going with Ryan Jeffers exclusively in the playoffs. And keeping Vasquez in the regular rotation as a steady sort of veteran uh, guy, you know, who works well with the pitchers and, and usually plays pretty strong defense uh, is going to help preserve Jeffers physically for that crucial late stage of the season. I think the Twins are, are right to just kind of be keeping this 50-50 balance for the time being. Um, similarly, it's tough for me to get too worked up about the team's recent costly late game lapses that have led to some of these, these one run losses. Um, yes, it's true that all of their last six losses have been by one run and relievers were tagged with the loss in all of those games. 
But the way many have played out is akin to what we saw on Tuesday and Friday. You know, these are just ordinary bad breaks and minor miscues that are turning the tides in tight games. So it goes, Um, you know, I mean, the saying you can't win them all really rings true in these kind of situations. Um, These are not concerning losses, in my opinion, really. They're just they're just losses. Um, Even with the the recent string of one run losses, the Twins are still solidly above 500 in such games on the season at 14 and 11. Uh, that is not to say that I don't think the bullpen could use an upgrade or two going forward, which brings us to our trending storyline for the week. As we turn the calendar to July, we're officially entering trade deadline season in Major League Baseball, folks. Uh, The Twins very much in the buyer category as they look to surmount Cleveland's lead in the division and put together another postseason run. Uh, Minnesota has a flourishing minor league system with numerous high-performing, highly regarded prospects they could dangle in the hunt for impact talent, although it remains to be seen how their self-imposed financial limitations may or may not limit their options. Uh, At The Athletic, our friend Aaron Gleeman teamed up with Eno Saris uh, to put together an exhaustive overview of players who might be available on the trade market. I highly recommend checking that out if you have a subscription to The Athletic. Um, They categorize them by position and tier. It's really well organized um, and just great information uh, if you want to sort of peruse the landscape and what's going to be available here as the deadline approaches. Um, They have the hitters, they have the starters, they have the relievers um, all in their own groups. Um, You know, looking at those groups, I think it's kind of hard to make the argument that the Twins have a real offensive need, given what we're talking about. I mean, they are swimming in, in quality depth basically right now. Um, but there's a good argument for targeting a frontline starter, and there's an almost undeniable case, I think, for targeting relief help. You look at Brock Stewart, um, you know, he's gradually making his way back from the shoulder injury that's had him sidelined now for a couple months, um, reportedly making progress in his bullpen sessions. But uh, to me, it's tough to feel confident in what you're getting from him the rest of the way. Uh, it's not something I'm really comfortable counting on. Uh, Yohan Duran remains in uncertainty. Uh, he came in and had a nice clean save on Sunday, which was great to see. But, uh, you know, with the lost velocity and the strikeouts uh, and some of the performances we've seen this year, I don't know if you can feel like you're like he's that guy uh, at this moment. So to me, the plainest need for the Twins in terms of taking the next step as a premier contender, being in the class of those Yankees, Orioles, uh, Guardians, is at least one more high caliber relief arm for the late innings. Um, So as such, I will be keeping a close eye on some of the players that were named at the top of the list from Aaron and Eno. Um, Names like Mason Miller of the Athletics, uh, Tanner Scott of the Marlins, Paul Seawald of the Diamondbacks, and uh, even our old friend Ryan Presley of the Astros in the coming weeks, although uh, Houston may be removing themselves from that, that seller's borderline that they've been on. Um, Will all these players be shopped? Um, If so, how will their markets take shape? Uh, These are the questions that I'll kind of be tracking. The Twins have certainly seen the downside of paying the freight for bullpen help at the deadline. Look no further than Jorge Lopez from a couple years ago as one example. Uh, But to stand still this year would feel kind of irresponsible, I think, barring major developments in the next month. Uh, you know, maybe Duran really, really rounding back into form or Stewart coming back. But even still, um, I think the Twins can and sh- and will um, be acquiring at least one reliever at the deadline. Uh, let's close out, as we always do, by looking ahead to the next week for the Twins. They will return home on Tuesday from their successful 6-3 and three West Coast road trip uh, for a six-game homestand around the July 4th holiday here with three games against the Tigers and three against the Astros. Um, Tuesday's opener against Detroit will make for a really great matchup of strength on strength. Minnesota's lineup has been elite against left-handed pitchers this year, uh, and they'll be going against perhaps the best left-handed pitcher in baseball in Tariq Skubal of the Tigers. Um, Houston, over the weekend, we know it's not a team to take lightly. Uh, just mentioned they've They've been sort of down in the AL West, but they're on the rise, just moved above 500 on Sunday. Uh, I think just a few games now behind the Mariners in that division. So um, their lineup is is strong, and it will present some challenges for Twins pitching. So uh, should be some good baseball at Target Field in the week ahead. Uh, let's take a look at the pitching matchups. Uh, as I mentioned, the Tigers will be throwing the lefty Tariq Skubal on Tuesday. Twins will be coming back with Simeon Woods-Richardson. Uh, Wednesday will feature Jack Flaherty of the Tigers, David Festa making his home debut for the Twins, 
And on July 4th, on Thursday on the holiday, it'll be our old friend Kenta Maeda starting for the Tigers uh, and Red Hot Bailey Ober starting for the Twins. Uh, weekend series against the Astros. I believe they have not announced uh, their starter for Friday yet, but um, Hunter Brown and Spencer Arigetti scheduled for Saturday and Sunday as of now. Uh, Twins will be countering with Pablo Lopez, Joe Ryan, and Simeon Woods Richardson. So the Twins just continue to rattle off series victories. They've put uh, a lot of their struggles firmly in the rearview mirror, I think. Uh, and are playing really good ball. Uh, they're winning big, they're losing small, which I think is is a telltale sign of a high-quality team. Uh, the most wins in the American League with 40 since that 7-13 and 13 start, and as mentioned, their offense has been elite. Um, so I'm, I'm really loving watching this team. Uh, I hope you are too, and uh, really appreciate you checking out the Week in Review podcast. Uh, if you enjoy the show, Please feel free to give us a review on your podcast platform of choice. And of course, we invite you to come by twinsdaily.com and uh, check out all of our great content and share your thoughts in the comments section or maybe create a blog of your own. Uh, Again, my name is Nick Nelson. This has been the Week in Review, and we'll see you next week.